So beginning with uh, our legislation on North Korea, uh, that country remains one of, the, one of the greatest threats due to the fact that they are developing nuclear weapons. And get, given the attitude of Kim Jong-un, one of the greatest threats, uh, not just to the United States, but to our allies uh, in, in Northeast Asia. The dictators of North Korea have repeatedly de defied the international community's efforts to dismantle the nuclear program there. For years, North Korea has repeatedly dangled the promise of nuclear disarmament and dismantlement of their program in order to get existing sanctions eased. It has been six years since North Korea walked away from the negotiating table. The only thing that has changed since 2008 is that North Korea is closer to miniaturizing a nuclear warhead. Our North Korea policy, frankly, has been a bipartisan failure. Last year, when we held a hearing on North Korea, it had just completed its third nuclear test, and it had successfully launched a three-stage intercontinental ballistic missile. Today, reports show that North Korea may soon conduct a fourth nuclear test. The administration says that its North Korea policy remains one of strategic patience. It is now time for Congress to lead by providing a clear legislative framework for sanctions to deprive Kim Jong-un of his ability to build nuclear weapons and to deprive him of his ability to repress and abuse the North Korean people. The North Korea Sanctions Enforcement Act seeks to apply the same type of pressure that the Treasury Department successfully applied in 2005 when it targeted a small bank in Macau that was complicit in Pyongyang's counterfeiting. This was the Banco Delta Asia. This impact sent a ripple throughout the international financial system. If you'll recall, uh, 10 other banks um, uh, complied once uh, Banco Delta Asia was, um, was named, and as a consequence, hard currency was cut off from North Korea. It seriously crimped the financing there. It, it stopped the ability for them to continue the, their buildup on their missile program. It made it impossible for the, the, the dictator there to pay his generals, which is never a good position for a dictator to be in. So this was one of the most effective steps we have taken against North Korea. Um, it lasted in place, as I recall, about eight months uh, until the State Department brought significant pressure on Treasury. Uh, and this was under the Bush administration. Uh, State was interested uh, in getting them lifted in the hopes that that would then get North Korea to the table. Of course, those negotiations proved to be fruitless. And we lost the ability at that time for the one thing that had held in check the ability of the regime to continue on its program. This legislation we have with us today enables our government to go after Kim Jong-un's illicit activities, just like we went after organized crime in our own country. And it does so by interdicting shipments and disrupting the flow of money. And these sanctions target North Korea's money laundering. Just as in, in 05, it was a case of them counterfeiting $100 bills uh, that, that got us to the point where sanctions were put in place. Uh, they are involved in money laundering. They are involved in counterfeiting. Of course, they are involved in illicit smuggling and narcotics trafficking for those who have watched the way in which the regime gets um, the lion's share of its hard currency. And there is a focus on North Korea's deplorable human rights violations in this legislation by targeting those officials responsible specifically for torture, for the gulags, for the extrajudicial killings that are, sadly, a fact of life in North Korea today. So this bipartisan piece of legislation has over 135 co-sponsors. It has garnered the support of humanitarian groups worldwide. And humanitarian aid is in no way affected, I, I should note, uh, for the members here. Second, we go to H.R. 4449, the Human Trafficking Prevention Act, and this seeks to ensure that U.S. personnel overseas are properly equipped to perceive and combat the scourge of human trafficking. 
Though current law requires the State Department personnel be trained to identify trafficking victims, it does not prescribe minimum training requirements. This bill does that. It adds uh, some of these specifics, which I think are important, a training course for Department personnel who, who deal with trafficking issues, trafficking briefings of all the ambassadors and deputy chiefs of mission before they depart to their post so they know their responsibilities in this regard, annual reminders to personnel regarding key trafficking issues related to their countries of focus. As you know, we have made significant changes in the law and we want to make sure that they are enforcing it. So um, let me see if we have some additional uh, notes here. Lastly, we have House Resolution 600, which urges the government of Afghanistan to pursue a transparent, credible, and inclusive runoff presidential election. I thank uh, Mr. Grayson of Florida for his work on this timely resolution. Less than two months ago, Afghans overwhelmingly flocked to the polls to vote in presidential and provisional elections. Now, I think this is interesting. More than 7 million Afghan citizens cast a ballot during the first round of voting. That dwarfs the 4.5 million who voted in 2009. Although the April elections were a significant improvement, there is still progress to be made. Numerous electoral complaints led to the invalidation of votes in certain precincts. And just last week, Afghanistan's Independent Election Commission fired poll workers who were accused of voter fraud. This resolution urges the government of Afghanistan to lessen the risk of fraud, to improve electoral transparency, to enhance security efforts, and increase voter participation during the upcoming runoff. Importantly, it also recognizes the sacrifices of the members of our armed forces and underscores that this election will contribute to the security and stability interests of both Afghanistan and of the United States. A Afghans will finally su select a successor to President Karzai on June the 14th. This election offers the chance for a fresh start with a new president and will allow Afghans to create a new and better era. Um, we now go to Mr. Elliot Engel.